Hey, what's happening, guys? I am almost completely out of my favorite solder, which is the MG Chemicals 6040.032 inch diameter with 2.2% per two flux. So another roll like this is like $23, which, you know, is still relatively inexpensive, but I thought, just for fun, I'd try something different, something cheaper. So, got on Amazon, I looked around, and I found this, Wizotech solder wire. It's 6040, and it is the uh, same diameter. So, I figured, give it a try, right? See how it works. But then I thought, well, let's try some other stuff while we're at it. For desoldering braid, I normally use Goodwick. But I thought we'd try something different. This is from NTE Electronics. And this is SW02-10 No Clean Solder Wick. Number 4 blue with .098 inch, 2.5 millimeter. Length is uh, 10 feet. And do I have a knife? Yes. So I thought we'd give it a test. See how that does. See if it's got a... Interesting. My light is flashing. We'll see if it's got flux in it. If not, we'll add some flux. Which is the final thing in our mix. You have seen me in the past use uh, some paste flux like, like this. And also the flux pen like this. But I thought we'd try something different. A liquid flux in a needle applicator bottle and this stuff is ruby fluid I've heard good things about it so I thought I'd, che I'd check it out it is a little bit caustic but hey that's what makes it fun to play with right so one other thing the most frightening soldering iron I have ever played with it is a butane soldering iron because I do need to do some outdoor soldering when I'm working on antennas and whatnot. And running an extension cord isn't always a good idea. So I got this one from Amazon. It's like $13. Now what did I do with the card for it? Because I want you to see the card. Look at that picture. I guarantee you, if you hold this soldering iron like this, while you're soldering it, two things are going to happen. First... You're going to smell burning meat. And second, you're going to become left-handed. But truly, this is the most frightening soldering iron I've ever used. And you'll see why when we fire it up. So I've got us a little proto board here. Little clipper on. Try to get it so it doesn't reflect back in your face. It's all about the angle of the dangle. Try that. Yeah, that's not bad, right? And then we have some random components from the bowl of holding. Nice capacitor. What else we got here? A couple resistors. We'll try a, you know, one resistor with the MG chemical solder, one with the uh, Wizotech. We'll see how they do. Let's see, do I have another capacitor? Hold on. We got another capacitor. So we'll, uh, we'll solder these guys in with the two different types of solder using a standard soldering iron first then we'll see about desoldering them with the wick and then we'll bring in the most frightening soldering iron ever and we'll have a play with it so first of all 
we give this a flux a shot here. See how it does. Just a dab will do you. And I am going to bring in the uh, fan because I don't know what this stuff is going to smell like. So we'll start one resistor and one capacitor with the good old MG Chemicals solder and a standard soldering iron, temperature controlled. Tin our tip just a little bit. We'll get in here and we'll see what it's like. Well, you can see that flux really flash off there. Which is good, it's cleaning the metal, making sure we have a good joint and a good surface. Now, we'll try the Wizotech. Clean off my soldering iron, retin it with this stuff. Now this stuff was only $9.99 for a half pound, as opposed to the MG Chemical, which was like $23. So, you know, I like to keep it cheap. Alright, let's take a closer look. So the ones on the top row here, focus. No, come on. Alright, we got some focus finally. So, the ones up here are the MG Chemicals, and the ones on the bottom are the Wizotech. And from what I can see, they are looking pretty similar I don't see any problems with that at all yeah, and somebody is dinging my phone it's Friday night I believe it's uh, Gator Boy down in Florida I'll be with you in a minute Gator Boy I'm making a video right now alright so I trimmed the leads off and now we'll test out the uh, NTE desoldering wick. See how well it does. So I'm going to clean my iron. Get on here and see what we get. Hmm. Not bad. Now these are plated through holes, so... That does make things just a little bit more interesting. Alright, let's add a little flux to this wick. Doesn't seem to soak it up very well. And see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Not really. Let's try and add a little flux to the solder. And just to retin my iron here. And we'll try that again. See if that makes any difference. No. It's okay, but, uh, oh, man, that stinks. I do prefer the good wick. That's just my opinion. You know, 
but you know, do as you want with it. Alright, next. <laughs> let's uh let's get a couple more. Oh, how about this? No. Grab a couple more resistors here. Pop them in there and we'll get out the uh world's scariest soldering iron. Now it's not temperature controlled, so it is not ideal for electronics work, but we'll see how it does. Turn the, uh, well, I'll turn the fan on in a minute. So to light the, here, let's go out. To light this bad boy, we gotta turn the gas up a little bit. Then we turn the flame on. You can hear it hiss, and you have to light it. Which means... Yeah, crap. Okay, there we go. We got flame now. Can you hear it? Let's see if you can see what I'm talking about when I call it the world's scariest soldering iron. Before it starts catalyzing, it shoots flame out the sides. And that's why I was saying that if you held it like they showed you in the picture, you'd be in for it. I don't know if it's still going or not, I can't tell. It is now. Alright, this takes a minute to get hot, so I will be back when it's hot. Well, she's still heating up. I don't know how well you can see it, but we got flames everywhere. So as soon as, uh, as soon as she starts catalyzing and is safe to use, we'll be back. All right, she started catalyzing. It's five minutes later, so hopefully it's hot enough to melt solder now. Oh yeah. Let's see what we can do with her. Well, first thing I can tell you is it is not as accurate as my other iron. It tends to throw a little bit of solder just about everywhere. But, you know, if you needed to solder somewhere out in the field, and this is all you got, I suppose it would be okay. Just don't hold it down here where they tell you to in the picture. All right, I'm going to switch her off. The stink of it. All right, I cleaned and tinned the tip so it doesn't oxidize. Yeah, I'm going to turn that fan back on. It definitely will be useful in an outdoor-like environment. You just got to know that it takes a minute or two to get hot, and it's going to stay hot for a couple minutes as well. All right, we'll put it on our little built-in stand here. Let's see if we can't come in and have a look at those joints. They're not bad. But you can see the uh, the extra solder there. And there, like I said, it's not as accurate. 
But then again, you know, the tip is quite large. So take that with a grain of salt. But anyway, after all of this rambling and babbling, what say I? Well, the Wizotech solder seems great. It's half the price of the MG solder. Do I switch? I don't know. I've used MG solder for a long time. Maybe. Uh, the NTE CleanWick works, but it is not as good as uh, Gutwick. And the Ruby Fluid Liquid Flux works great. And it, uh, I mean, it, it's pretty clean, which I really like. So that's good. Just get you a couple of these little needlepoint vials and uh, you'll be good to go. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this rambling little video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll put links to these items down below. That's it. I'm out. Peace.